there's been a lot of speculation recently about whether an all-digital film can work, and Mr. Man's new gangster picture doesn't really do much to support the sentiment. It's probable that film is going to be dead in a few decades, and all movies are then going to be shot in digital, because it's really, I don't know if anyone has ever shot a movie here, but uh, it's really a lot easier to shoot in digital. It's a lot less hassle to shoot in digital than it is to shoot with traditional film. And though it's easier, there is a significant drop in the quality of the picture at some points, and I really hope that's going to be addressed in future versions of the technology before they start doing it all in digital. I'm going to set the technology aside for a moment because first I'd like to talk about what really matters, the story and the characters. Public Enemies is a story of John Dillinger, the founding of the FBI, and the war on crime in the 1930s. The movie does a good job of portraying all this, but unfortunately it doesn't really seem to have anything to say about it. I'd appreciate it if the movie were to have an opinion regarding the events out of which it is composed. Johnny Depp is good in the movie, but he isn't really given much to do because the characters aren't deep enough. Especially not Christian Bale's character, who we should get much more screen time with for reasons made apparent at the end of the picture. Something I found particularly annoying was that there's no ambiguity regarding whether or not the police are the good guys. They're really just bad. The movie really makes John Dillinger out to be too good and the police to be much too evil. Dillinger, he really never, he never kills anyone on screen and he never does anything that would, you would think would warrant a death sentence. In all the, most of the great gangster pictures, you always had that you, um, where the gangster was a protagonist, you always had, like, you could see where they were coming from, but you knew they were evil. And this one is just like, eh. Or not evil, it's just bad. But the police in this movie, they just maraud around the 1930s America, killing everyone, using strong arm tactics, torturing women, just really being reckless. This movie is a prime example of the might of production companies. That's probably what I like about it the most, because there's so many great costumes, sets, vehicles, and props that all complement each other nicely to create a splendidly believable 1930s America. And that was, it was great to be in that world. But the technical shortcomings I mentioned before come into play whenever there's a lot of shooting going on. I don't mean like shooting with a camera, I mean like guns. A lot of shooting going on firefights, or whenever the camera is not a, is not static. That is to say, when it's moving. And whenever either of these two things occur, the quality instantly and alarmingly drops to that of like a soap opera or something. And the whole thing ends up looking totally underproduced. And when you juxtapose that with the rest of the film, which looks quite good it immediately calls attention to the filmmaking and pulls you directly out of the wonderful world which the filmmakers work so hard to create.